Today in our 2016 GMC Sierra 2500, we'll be having a look at and installing the Kurt Double Lock Flip and Store Underbed Gooseneck Hitch with Installation Kit, part number C607-604. All right, here's what our gooseneck looks like installed underneath the vehicle. Now what sets this gooseneck apart from other goosenecks on the market is the fact that our ball here is secured in place in the gooseneck with a double pin mechanism. A lot of the other goosenecks on the market secure the ball with just a single pin. This gives us added strength and durability. Now I'm gonna go ahead and retract our handle. You can see how the ball is secured. Now on the driver's side of our vehicle, we'll find our handle that we can use to remove our ball. This is the handle that secures it in place. When you wanna remove the ball or flip it upside down for storage, you grab the handle, pull it out till it stops, turn clockwise, and it's locked into place. When you're ready to have the ball flipped over or ready for towed position, just grab it, turn it counterclockwise, and release it. The spring-loaded action will lock it into place. Now here's what it looks like in the truck bed with our ball in the towed position. This two and five sixteenth inch ball with our gooseneck system has a 7,500 pound vertical load limit and a 30,000 pound max gross trailer weight rating. You'll want to consult with the owner's manual of your truck and not exceed the limits of your truck or the gooseneck system itself. Now, our ball, neat feature about this, when we're not towing our trailer, we can pull up on it, grab it by this handle here, and set it down back inside for a stored position. We also have this nice dust cover here where you can push down inside too to help protect your ball to keep any debris from falling down in there and making the pin mechanism difficult to use. Now you may notice one thing about the ball, it's keyed on one side so it can only be inserted one way. If we look at it from the bottom, you can see the key for the indentation. Now our hitch also has these nice, easy to use safety chain loops that are spring loaded. So when your trailer is not in use, and your ball stored upside down. You can see how they sit fairly flush down inside the channels of your bed, thus allowing us to have maximum use of our truck bed without anything taking up any of the surface on the bottom. What I really like about this gooseneck compared to other systems on the market is the fact that when we store our ball upside down, we actually have the plug here to keep any dirt, debris, or moisture from coming inside of there causing corrosion and possibly causing the ball to get stuck. Now that we've gone over some features, we'll show you how to get it installed. All right, we've gone ahead and removed our spare tire and both of our rear wheels in order to make our installation easier. Now we'll remove our fender liner and both of our wheel wells. It's held in place with multiple T15 screws that run along it. So we'll remove all these screws. Now we'll just grab our fender liner until you have all the screws out and work it on out. And we'll repeat the same process on the other side. Okay, now we're underneath our truck. We need to remove our heat shield right here. It's held in place with four 13 millimeter bolts. We have one on each of our cross member and then there's two on the passenger side frame rail. And here are our other two bolts. These are ones you can actually see really easily. Okay, with all of our bolts off, we can peel our heat shield off now and slide it on out. Push it forward and then pull it back, and you can set it aside. We will not be reinstalling it. Now before we put our cross rails into place, we want to run a bolt through the threaded holes to help clean out the threads. You'll want to do this on all the bolt locations, and then run it through and out a few times. All right, now we'll take our rear cross arm. You can tell which one's the rear, as the fact it doesn't have a notch cut out in it. 
and we'll slide it into place. When we slide it into place, we want to make sure when we rotate it down, now these holes here face towards the bottom of the bar. So we'll go in front of this bed rail right here and slide it in. And then we'll rotate it up. Got a pair of channel locks on it now. Just twisted it down. And we'll slide it back. Okay, here's our front cross rail. As you can see, we still have our holes facing towards the bottom. And here's the notch right here. The notch we want to have towards the driver's side of the truck. So we'll do the same thing. And we'll slide this one forward. Right about there, we'll probably be okay for right now. Okay, now we'll take two of our half inch bolts, flat washers and lock washers, and we'll orient the hardware with a lock washer on, and then a flat washer. All right, now we'll take our frame plate. This is on the passenger side of our truck. We'll slide it up, and we'll bolt it to a rail. We're just gonna get it started for right now. Okay, now we got it started on our passenger side. We'll push our frame bracket over to where our two holes here and here line up with the holes in the frame of the truck already. And now we'll repeat the same process that we did on the passenger side over on the driver's side. Okay, now we'll take our pull wire here, go through the hole in our frame bracket, go through the hole in the frame, and right behind the frame on the other side, there's a large access hole it'll come out of. And here you can see the access hole where the wire came through. Now we'll take one of our plates, stick it on the pull wire, and we'll thread on our carriage bolt. We'll stick the plate in and pull the bolt on through. We'll remove our pull wire. Once the bolt's sticking through all the way, make sure you don't damage the pull wire when you remove it because you have to use it again. Now we'll thread on one of our flange nuts. Just get it started. Now we'll come through this hole and it's access holes right behind it too. Okay, with the bolt through, we'll put on our flange nut now. And we'll repeat the same process on the other side. Here's a quick tech tip. Before you go to install the driver side frame bracket, if you clamp the cross rail to the back side of this bed crush rail, it makes it a little bit easier to get your hardware through the frame. Okay, now we'll take our template here and we'll stick it up with the arrow that says F facing towards the front and we'll loosely install it with a couple bolts. We're using this template to drill our center hole. Okay. All right, with our bolts both started, we'll snug them down. Okay, with that drilled through, we can now remove our template. Now we'll use the hole saw as indicated in the instructions to make our hole for the gooseneck head to come through. Okay, now we'll get our remaining eight bolts together with the lock washer and the flat washer. And we'll grab an extra set of hands and raise our center section up into position. Okay, so we'll raise it up over our exhaust and around our brake lines here. And we'll have our second set of hands hold it up place while we install our hardware. You want to make sure the ball section faces towards the back of the truck when you raise it up. All right, now that we have two bolts started on the front side and two bolts started on the back side, we'll install the other two in each rail. All right, now that we have our gooseneck center section in place, 
We want to make sure that it's centered in the bed of our truck. I already did that. Now we'll start to tighten down our hardware, beginning with the center section of the rails first. Use a three quarter inch socket for that. Now we'll tighten down our crossbars to our side plates. Now we use a 15 16 socket and tighten up our frame brackets. And now we'll torque all the hardware to the amount specified in the instructions, beginning with the center section first. And now we'll torque our side plates here to the frame, the amount specified in the instructions. Okay, now we'll torque our frame brackets to our cross brackets here. Okay, we're going to use a center punch now, and on the middle section of the hole closest to where our ball goes in, we will make marks so when we drill these out, our drill bit will be in the direct center. Now we'll go ahead and loosen up our exhaust by popping the hangers off. Use a pry bar or a pair of channel lock pliers to help loosen the exhaust. We use a little bit of spray lubricant on it to help them slide off easier. So this is the one closest to the tailpipe section. We have a couple more in the front we need to loosen up too. Now this exhaust hanger right here is bolted to the side of the frame using two 15 millimeter bolts. And remove them. And we'll swing this exhaust hanger up out of the way. We've gone ahead and put a strap around our exhaust now and secured it as far over to the passenger side of our frame as we could to give us more room to drill straight up and down. Okay, now we'll drill a pilot hole through the center. And we'll do the same for the other side. Okay, now we'll go ahead and enlarge our hole to the size as indicated in the instructions. Alright, now we'll take our safety chain U-bolts and drop them on down to our holes. Right now we'll install our hardware for our safety chain loops. Place on one of our flat washers, followed by a spring, followed by another flat washer, and then a nylon lock nut. It's the same on both sides. Okay, we'll repeat the same process for the other safety chain loop. Okay, now we'll tighten our lock nuts down until they're flush to the bottom of the U-bolt. Now we'll insert our ball lock with this hole facing towards the top. Now we'll take our handle for our ball release and insert it over our frame through the hole here and this hole here and we'll hold it right there. We'll slide on our two washers here. We may not need all two of them, but we're starting with two for now and we'll slide on our spring here. And now we'll take our bolt and insert it through the hole into the handle. Making sure it pinned in place, which it did. And we'll place the nut on the other side. Okay, now we'll use a 5 16 wrench and a 9 30 seconds wrench and we'll tighten down the lock nut. Now we'll go ahead and place our sticker on our driver's side frame bracket. All right, now we can reinstall our exhaust. All right, now we'll reinstall our fender liners.
Now over here on our driver's side, with our fender liner back in place, you can see when you go to pull the handle out, the fender liner's in the way. So we'll take a utility knife and we'll cut a notch for it. Now when we go to use our handle, it works properly. Now we'll go ahead and reinstall our wheels. And that completes our look at and installation of the Kurt Double Lock Flip and Store Underbed Gooseneck Hitch with Installation Kit, part number C607-604 on our 2016 GMC Sierra 2500. Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.